Okay, Jain the uh, Today we are really fortunate that we had a session on an international issue in the morning, and we could look at multiple options which India could exercise. You know, in case of uh, China, Taiwan, eventually. But coming to closer home, even if we have to exercise any option in that context, or in any direct conflict with China, Pakistan, by themselves are in any kind of collusion response. Uh, I think the capacity building is very, very important. And uh, all of you who would be monitoring the current day's conflict, the technology has actually changed the way we are going to fight the war, the kind of equipment which we are going to use, uh, be the cost involved, and you know, maintaining the legacy equipments or so called conventional equipments and the way forward. Uh, in fact, we are also aware that our next synergy general issue is on these technology only, um, acting the uh, joint war fighting. Uh, but largely, we have remained in the theoretical construct. We have made certain effects uh, in, in certain uh, domains, but uh, when we were deliberating on man and man taming the paper which we wrote for the ideas, we realized that there are a large number of areas having the impact of technology where we are way behind. Uh, leave aside as to how we uh, compare with other countries, but we are not, in fact, even able to meet our own uh, genuine requirements. So today we are very fortunate to have amongst us General Brahm, who is Yossi Dakshin Bharat professional of a total difference would be giving us a practitioner's perspective. You know, there are a lot of people who keep talking on the theoretical domain, uh, but uh, those things neither help nor, you know, able to transform the actual uh, capacity building. So, uh, we are grateful to you, Brad, that you took time despite your heavy uh, engagement at Delhi and uh, spare this time for us. Uh, we would like to have more of this as we go ahead and uh, I'm sure you all who are sitting here and with us on WebEx now are going to be joining later. They will get uh, greatly benefit from his experience. So let's you know hear the practitioner right from uh, him on the uh, technology perspective of the our armed forces especially you know what needs to be actually done? How do we, you know, uh, get over this, you know, tangle or challenge? Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, General Ashok, the DG Sanjos, uh, and all audience here, and those on the uh, video. Uh, firstly, thank you for your very kind words and introduction. You see, uh, generally I'll be covering uh, a topic uh, which I think is quite important. So I'll try and cover the impact of technology on war fighting. How do we clearly define our needs? Now, uh, whatever technology is coming, its impact is being written. And as General Ashok mentioned, uh, how do we translate into ground is uh, things sometimes are not clear or they're not moving in the right direction because of various factors. So what I'll try and do is try to uh, give uh, clarity on this subject so that uh, this thing which is impacting us actually uh, we bridge that gap. Now, if you have to start with our main adversary, the northern adversary, around 89, 87, we were the GDP was also similar with them, and our technological levels were similar. In fact, our army was much better because we were getting imported equipment from USSR while they were having problems with then USSR and they were trying to take in their, like I'm from Amartpur, they were trying to take in their tanks, do reverse engineering and, and make something. So around uh, 87, 89, 90, we were similar, but after that, they have taken off. So this gap as it is, is about 20 or 25 years and we have started only a few years back. So this 20, 25 years gap is already there. And technology is also moving equally fast. So, you know, uh, bridging this gap uh, actually requires some kind of a pole vaulting. So, if you have to pole vault, then definitely we uh, need to do things differently. 
and slightly in a more proactive manner. And uh, with my whatever experience, I can say the talent is here. It needs to be harnessed. It's there in India. As for technology is concerned, you're just attending a seminar. It needs the right people at the right place to push things in the right direction. So I'll straight away come to the uh, topic, uh, impact of technology. Now, impact of technology when we're talking, uh, you see, technology was there in guns which were used in World War II. But when we are talking of impact of technology, it is a technology which has come in last seven, eight years in the world and in India, more so in past four, five. We are talking of AI, ML, uh, robotics, autonomous vehicles, sensors, digital twins, space technology, you know, all the things which are additive manufacturing and all these things which are coming in in a big way, which are transforming things which in the commercial field as well as in up and space technology. So we are only talking of these kind of technologies impacting. Rest, you know, the guns, the tanks and all, they were always there, only thing. We, so uh, the, that the definition, we should be very clear what that we are talking about the software AI, ML, and this kind of a technology is confusing. Now, coming straight to the uh, clarity part, first let me uh, identify kinetic and non kinetic. Uh, non kinetic, you are aware, is uh, cyber domain, electric uh, warfare domain, the space domain. So, we'll leave that to one side. Let's come to the kinetic. Now, when we are talking of kinetic, technology to be used in the kinetic domain, that is uh, when we are in physical contact, whether through missile, this thing or what we are fighting. So now let's restrict to that. Now we have, we have to be very specific. Again, coming to the specifics, uh, consider Pakistan and China. Now as far as Pakistan is concerned, uh, we are around similar, but of course Pakistan is getting some equipment from China. But China definitely is much, much higher. Now, if we see China, because you know uh, why I'm saying when you have to define what we need, we have to go through this small bit of analysis. Now, as far as China is concerned, the kinetic domain fight will generally take place on the northern borders. And because of the altitude and the weather and other conditions, a lot of technologies which I've just mentioned may not function the way they function in other places. So, because we are lifting straight examples from Russia, Ukraine. Let me give you an example, uh, because I was there after that thing, I was sent for some of discussions also. If you are going to use your drones for kind of surveillance, they will not work there because of cloud or other this thing. So, what you need there is satellites. In, uh, on, 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 on. So, I'm just giving you one example. So, we have to be very specific what we need with Pakistan and what we need there. Second thing which we don't do, which I've seen certain, uh, you know, in, uh, war games or this thing or whatever we are planning. Uh, we need to have exact details before we build us. We have to know exact details of what China is having, what Pakistan is having, both the adversaries, what kind of technology they are going to use in that particular era. There has to be some kind of a net assessment. And impact of technology has to be part of the off plan. Because if you uh, talk of force ratios, normally we say force ratio 3 is to 1 for attack or in mountain it is 6 to 1, 12 is to 1 or whatever. So a similar kind of uh, appreciation has to be done as far as technological levels which will apply their items. So which we are not doing. In fact, as a study, it, it impact of technology on a particular thing should be part of your appreciation when you write ground and all that impact of technology also should be one consideration which we should start teaching staff college and all the other things also because technology is uh, transforming so why i'm emphasizing this point is very good example is hamas hamas didn't have a technology but they knew exactly what israeli had so they counted it so i am saying since uh, we already have that gap. So before we bridge that gap, we have to exactly know what are the kind of technology which will come across us. So this is as far as a normal thing is concerned. Now let's let's be uh, kinetic domain be very specific. How has technology impacted kinetic or our war fighting on ground? Again, I will specify. I'm not talking of cyber and leave that. For, I will talk about it slightly later. There are three things or four things which have happened. One is 
that uh, whatever these technologies have come because you know your guns tanks and all are same your firepower is same your destruction element is same yes you may improve your firepower by a longer gun or longer uh, pinnak or smudge or whatever missile you are getting the impact is where so that part is actually very important to understand where is the impact happening it is not increasing the range of the gun first it is which i'm of course you know it but i'm being you know just to, first is battlefield transparency that is that uh, we can expect maybe not from pakistan but from china that whatever we are doing now is already known to so our tactics and this thing has to be so uh, you know if if we are digging a trench if we are digging so i like gave an example like again talking of ladakh area tanks we have slit trenches which were cut so they said we'll put our tanks there my god these slit trenches are already known to so if you put a tank before the contact before his force comes this this will be attacked by his you know this so the uh, the biggest impact which has occurred is the battlefield transparency you work in an environment where whatever you do you imagine that you are already your thing is known so that way you will protect yourself much much uh, better second thing which the technology has done is that because of you know the correct battle picture because of uh, correct everything a collective targeting can take place and that includes the drone targeting and most targeting will take place from here so firstly the thing has become transparent and then the targeting is taking place from air because you know drone does no way to go but since you know where is the enemy and where is the location you can target the drone there you can target the rocket there so second thing which is taking place is drone so therefore again you know as a response uh, what you need for each arm like if i'm a uh, dgrt Uh, what i need is if i should uh, okay i'll talk about that so let's collective targeting has taken place against the third thing which has taken place is there is no tactical battle area now depending on the range even your logistic they, you see normally we say na we are out of rt range assembly area now that ranges are got uh, obviated you uh, i mean depending on the seeder wants to target civil areas he can target anything because you know, everything is transparent so the, the even your logistic elements can't say ki hum rt range se bahar hain something so again it depends with china it is this. so this is the third thing and the fourth thing which is happened is anything which is static and unprotected will get hit so i am bringing down the impact of technology in operational terms this is Uh, what all it has happened now if i have to uh, make a counter that of course this kind of analysis is dg as well uh, i was dg armor for then you know the main thing which i focus on was if, if the battlefield has transferred and we are going to get attack from this thing counter drone systems okay the ad uh, what it had to do because you know ad were designed for larger aircraft what it had to do it had to do go in for having some kind of a uh, air defense for all kinds of drones which are happening so similarly you know each dg needs to uh, work out uh, whatever he needs to do now i will uh, uh, come to the subject how do you infuse technology now infusion of technology firstly i am coming on slight on just a point on the procurement uh, all these technologies uh, which we want to infuse which i we just mentioned ai ml and all this the use case has to be made by the user user means the person who is in the procurement chain so whether he is a dg or the deputy chief or his tdg or the same because the use case is not known to the uh, the person who is making these technology and all these technologies are not products you see you have to make a, a use case and design a product so first you see the video of the product these are swarm drones the drones are in the air they have now you say ai all the drones have their own artificial intelligence by which they connect with each other and uh, 
uh, there's a tab which will come later where you earmark an area uh, which you need to do surveillance on. This was a demo kind of a, this was a test trial in uh, the Ladakh area. So when you earmark an area from the data library which has been fed in, it identifies that this is a tank or this is uh, whatever the enemy equipment is there. Then you uh, send your kamikaze drones uh, if uh, you want to destroy them because there's a man in the loop. And uh, then there will be a uh, this guy with that tab on the tank, and then he uh, you know directs these kamikaze drones to strike. And there is this thing which is falling on the thing. Now you know, uh, so you can close this. So uh, now I'll try and explain this this product uh, didn't exist in the form which it is now being produced. You see, so there was uh, there's a long uh, uh, you know kind of a period of about six seven months when initially swarm drone was shown somewhere. Then the persons came up with some idea. Then we developed. Can you do this? So you know you have to go along with the developer. And uh, this thing was taken as part of EP before the Ukraine war. So that is another important point because Ukraine war, the drones have become very famous. So if the technology has to be seen, you need people who can visualize how the technology. So I had to put in a little bit of extra effort. Uh, to the hierarchy to tell them that this is important, please take it. But of course, had the Ukraine war happened, it would have been taken in one day. But nobody imagined that uh, that the drones are so important. So this swarm drones, as a technology, what it does is the the combat forces, especially the mechanized forces, they have no surveillance of the immediate area. They don't have any means. The only thing which we were using were AK troops. Now, by giving this thing to the combat forces, it will may include an infantry brigade also. He can survey the area in front because this is a range of 5, 10, 20 kilometers. And in that area, he can then strike them. Now you can consider a bridged operations, you can consider a operation across the hill, or you can it can act as a maneuver arm. So, you know, you have been able to use drones and the technology to create a aerial kind of a thing which you can employ in your whatever tactical operations you envisage by a jab and then you are the thing. For example, again, now we're going to Ukraine. The javelin guys were firing on the tank, there were a lot of casualties. So, if you have this thing which is going ahead, picking up these people who are firing missiles. They clear the area and the, your, your, your combat forces, mech forces or infantry or whatever, they go across. So, you know, uh, I'm just giving you this one example. So, the point which I'm giving is, it is the user who has to define the operational sense and give it this thing. I can give you many, but let me give you another one. Uh, Now uh, that was a soft drone, but uh, you know that is man in the loop. Now this is uh, you can say a uh, uh, replacement of your attack after. This is called ULPGM UAV launch precision guided design. So, you know, this, this, uh, so again, I can explain this. This general Ashok has been kind enough to say I'm a practitioner. So, I'll, so you know, I'll give you a live example how you bring in technology. Otherwise, you know. Now, this thing was, something was there with the DRD. The RCI and others were working on this. RCI and others were working on some kind of a strike ability and other things. But again, you know, the drone was not ready. So without naming a company, that company was brought in. Then there had to be a production partner. 
they have to be some other people so you know the effort has to be personal i still remember for at least maybe six months this thing was pushed every third four day meeting how to push it then some trials and you know you have to follow that bap process also where you have to certify all the things so this also was pushed like that now let me give you another example of uh, something which actually was the first idex contract which was signed uh, you know th the project of uh, idex was uh, stealth and it had some qrs laid down you know there are certain trl levels and all that it had uh, the basically the project was on electronic equipment to be placed on tanks so that the electronic equipment merges with the environment and so it becomes a stealth tank broadly putting in very simple terms so that you understand that if you take the ambient temperature or ambient heat and also it will merge in the part now uh, there was another guy who did, didn't have electronics but he had some paint and some cloth so when this came to me the file if the cost was exorbitant you can't put uh, for just for a little stealth you can't Uh, make the cost of the project higher than you know it, it has to be put on every tank that is one secondly it is impractical because otherwise uh, artificial falling 2 meters 5 meters from the tank nothing happens to the tank but maybe shrapnel will destroy this equipment in one second so it is uh, a thing which is impractical it may be nice as a demo and other things so i said actually that is the guy who needs to be encouraged so why i said this i changed the name of the project from stealth to Because it was not stealth, I said integrated mobile camouflage system. Now this guy is the first IDEX. You have heard of IDEX a lot. The first contract was this, which was signed. When I started, I mean, I and that was within one year when again we mentored and pushed. So now you can show the next slide. So you know he had this kind of a thing with the cloth and some paint and other things. And uh, this is how you encourage the startups of the country to come up with solutions, which are solutions are cheap. but the ideas have to be great so if you show the next slide now now if you see this is a thermal imaging site which is seeing both the tanks and the distance is not much 867 is 800 meters up uh, combat range is normally are 2000 meters and above so if you see at 800 meters the imcs tanks is getting invisible so at, there was other this thing also it was all so this kind of a percentage reduction is good enough in battle and when the fog of war is so you don't need to put expensive systems so go to the next one and the heat signatures because the heat signatures are the one which identify which the missiles home zone because you should understand all uh, uh, warheads are uh, chemical warheads whether it's a missile whether it is any other thing except for tank which is kinetic apf is here which is pure kinetic energy rest all warheads of anything are chemical energy and if they have a pgm then they have to seek heat so the left ice uh, ancs tank i mean you it is almost merging the comment the white shows the heat heat signatures so you know the, the this tank will get hit in the night or hit uh, by a heat seeking missile so other may not you know depending so i'm just giving you how do you infuse technology again i'm giving the example it is a collective effort it is a factor of the this thing and then somebody has to think Uh, like this project came one had to uh, request it so there are many examples but uh, i will not go into that the other problem of infusion of technology is uh, you know since i am uh, dakshin bharat there are it there are startups our idex projects uh, give a statement and you know again it's a slightly longish process but uh, the starters which are there they have ready technologies so we actually you may uh, suggest or whatever to that we idex and all are good i am not denying their utility they have a very good thing which have happened in fact dr ajay kumar was there in yesterday's session again i alighted but i alighted the same point which i am saying that uh, for starters which already have some kind of a thing they, the idex route is too long and startups to immediately produce because they don't have time so they need funding so immediately if i identify because you know the they will give you ideas if you can immediately make some kind of a policy arrangement or some kind of a funding and some kind of a decision making which 
which which encourages startup and uh, the infusion of technology in india i can tell you rest whatever is happening drdo idex atb and all the other policy things are there but if you want to pole vault the startups have to come in and for startups to come in they need uh, immediate decision immediate funding and uh, of course uh, the various startups okay you know uh, iitm pravartak is a research park in iit madras and uh, i think this this would be the best in india and even comparable to the world where there are where there are almost 500 startups in a huge complex next to iit so i am just showing you that uh, i i have i started interacting with them and i'm kind of you know guiding them or mentoring them so this is their presentation uh, discussion on potential products so when i went over their list of things so i'll just go to the next slide now these uh, startups just go to the next slide ah huh. so you know these startups are into commercial business now to pick up uh, you know uh, something is purely technical like this mind grow uh, we uh, the hardware chip design uh, if you are uh, talking about chips the hardware chip design is preserve of us and select companies like uh, texas instruments and things like that now this mind grove is making this which is uh, there's a secure mobile phone which has been made i think which is come in the news so they are working with that so you know uh, and second is music temple uh, chinese language the next is uh, drishtichar uh, this thing now they have a predictive maintenance uh, for you know dg sets and all so if you understand predictive maintenance uh, in tanks and in all the vehicles you know if it can predict that which engine is going to fail so that you know you reduce the cost of replacement or it damages your uh, major item or even to some extent you can uh, you know do away with medium repairs because in your cars we uh, never go to the Uh, workshop these days. Earlier, to apki jo car hoti thi, anything was getting repaired. Your cars, I'm talking about own private cars. Now, because you know any competent, so this is uh, this thing. And uh, the next one is, it is uh, doing some resistive technology, which I said it can be used for tunnels. So you know when he tells you a technology, you say you can work on tunnels. The same company, this Mr. Jen, the same I said, if you can uh, do the chain detection on the ground and see if you can detect mines. the next company is clean air this they were making it for covid so i said if you can make oxygen uh, this thing for soldiers which are on this thing uh, altitude so they have to climb the 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 you know they especially in a combat operation you have to climb a hill or otherwise also uh, they have a oxygen generator which is small which gives them extra oxygen so you can go to the next so you know like that this third company helixon which is a you know video conference for all your chronic conditions i have used it for now you know it's not all operation it is i have since ecs that were 86 ac is just under me there so and distance are very large like you know tamil nadu is a big state so people can't travel so we have trained a nursing assistant he is sitting there he gives all the data and they don't have to come in half the you know these guys are more of this thing going for that place so camo dg set uh, this it solutions then this last one of course has become very famous agnikul cosmos has launched that 3d rocket now that 3d rocket so was since one one has been going there a number of times he can print a 3d this this is a rocket engine this size and he can launch a satellite so this constellation of satellites which uh, is guy apna elon musk i'm saying of course he is much much advanced and space exactly but you know on the same line these guys can do it provided they are given a push so i just talked about northern borders northern borders you see your communications don't work your radio set like especially i'm talking of vhf border they don't work uh, you can't lay uh, ofcs all over so you need something on the satellite band for communication for isr for you know pnt also and uh, this alina so next so like that i'm just giving you uh, trends and modulus So these are small sound technology. Well, next, 
uh, this is my medical center. So there are a number of startups for, you know, medical side also. And next, and I said, you start a quantum thing in a server they want to do, because, you know, they are already into quantum. Now, quantum uh, computing or communications is something which cannot be jammed. It is absolutely secure and you know, people who know about it. So, but, you know, again, the implementation, all this is in theory. So, what I'm, I've given you this example is these startups, they have technologies. I mean, if that is not as part of IDEX, all these guys are doing their commercial business. So, to get, I've just lifted a few. There are so many of them. And somebody was giving uh, this figure that of the total startups, only I think 5% are in defense. Five or even, even maybe less. So, if you have to get the ecosystem going, all the startups, but then they can't go right. They need a different uh, root system. So, so much so we can close it now, I think. And uh, so, uh, I was mentioning about each arm. Each arm has to, you know, uh, be responsible for drones or each head of, whether it's arm or whether it's head of, uh, whichever vertical you are there, you are supposed to take care. Uh, uh, one thing which we generally know in, in interest of technology, we miss out that war is going to be fought with the current equipment. So, taking care of current equipment because ultimately it is brass tacks. Even in Ukraine, the brass tacks is there. Now, RT shells they are buying from all over the world because ultimately it is number of round fire, number of tanks, they are getting their T62s out of the garages, they are getting everything. So, ultimately it is your basic forge which has to function. So, uh, to upgrade that, like again, one project which you, uh, because you know, I have done that, so I can keep on highlighting at the cost of uh, highlighting myself only, which may not be so right. But just to tell you, 12.7 uh, NSVT gun, which is there on the tank, is a very good gun. Now, as part of the EP, uh, we have put a remote station and you have good sighting systems which can track a drone. Now, this weapon system has become a very effective without spending much. I think it is less than a lakh or something on each tank. Uh, not lakh, few lakhs, I think. But each tank has become almost self protected. And if you have all the tanks firing in the general direction, this little chance that drones can. So, you know, whether it's stealth, this thing, so you have to use the current equipment. So, each arm is responsible for that. Now, I left out the non-kinetic domain. Now, the non-kinetic domain is huge, uh, which is, you know, cyber war or you're talking electromagnetic spectrum or this space, the Congress, which is happening. We uh, really need to work actually in all three. If you talk of uh, space, actually speaking, it is ISRO and some things which are happening. But uh, somewhere, I think you, I think nobody knows it better than you that China's uh, that space force has come in. They have separated out. The U.S. has already had a space force in 2018 or 19, I think. So, if India is somewhere close, we need something of us because if you rent the space is such a vast. If you don't have people, then who will do it? By just having DSA, I am not sure. So this is beyond my understanding. But similarly for cyber. Now, cyber is defense. What we are doing, cyber is the computer. We are, I don't know. And cyber is how you practice war fighting or is information operation. And is, so, you know, that also, like China has a proper now information system force, which is separated out, which is going to take care of your ISR, which is going to. Uh, the other weakness is ISR. The ISR is fragmented, but ISR, we, uh, we, we need. Uh, proper ISR. So these are, uh, you know, things which don't increase firepower, but actually uh, makes your war fighting more efficient. If you have more ISR, if you have more uh, electronic warfare, if you have more of these things, then obviously you don't have to get into physical battle because you. This is what is the thought process in China. Has. They will make sure your systems all are down. And uh, like uh, they have that ability, this information again I got from IIT only. The Motorola, there's one chip which is of Chinese origin, which they can at the last minute. So, you know, all our equipment, there's a thing called sandboxing. All our equipment, which is uh, called most of the thing people are using, 
it needs to be vetted through that is there any vulnerability in each of these chips so uh, this part is quite huge so i will only leave it at that but the part which is with us kinetic domain uh, that is something which i thought i'll cover because one has done physically but cyber and other things need a lot of lot of attention 